The reason we're stocking tiger trout into St. Mary's Lake is because we want to try to thin out the overpopulated brook trout population. So brook trout have a tendency to overpopulate lakes like this and so they don't grow as well. The tiger trout are sterile and so when we put them into the lake they are not going to reproduce and that's what we want because if we decide we don't want to stock tiger trout anymore, the fact that they're sterile, if we stop stocking them eventually they'll go away. The parent species of tiger trout are brook trout and brown trout and so Mount Chavanaugh Hatchery in the Arkansas River Valley raised these fish to this three inch size class and now we're stocking those out. So the fact that the tiger trout are part brown trout, they have more of a tendency to eat other fish and so that's what we want them to do. We want them to eat um, and thin out the brook trout population so the brook trout then can grow to a bigger size. And then also the fact that we're stocking a different type of fish in here provides another opportunity for anglers uh, fishing St. Mary's Lake. Yeah, we, we do stock a lot of our high alpine lakes um, with uh, greenback cutthroat trout um, on this side of the divide. And on the other side, they, uh, my colleagues would, will stock um, Colorado River cutthroat trout or Rio Grande cutthroat trout in high alpine lakes. And it, does, it provides an opportunity for anglers who want to get away from the, the crowd, so to speak, and, and, and put the work into hiking up to these high alpine lakes and fishing for cutthroat trout subspecies. And in this case, the St. Mary's Lake, they can come up and fish for brook trout and now tiger trout since we started stocking tiger trout in here about six or seven years ago. Usually we use, do between 1,000 and 2,000 fish each year. This year we did 1,000 fish just because we didn't have as much uh, help in, as far as packing the fish in. So, but uh, next year we'll probably do go back to 2,000 fish. With these high alpine lakes, we can't really do like population estimates annually like we do in, um, down in the, say the Denver metro area. And so what we do is we come up to the alpine lakes, not every year, maybe every four or five years. I try to hit some of my high alpine lakes in the Clear Creek County area. And I'll send my crew um, to sample actually with, with fishing poles. And so they'll catch fish. And basically I'm not really doing a population estimate. We're just trying to see, okay, what kinds of fish do we have in these lakes? And then the different size classes of fish, then which equates to different ages of fish. I can take her. Oh, no, she's We're good. So if you're ever up fishing a high alpine lake in the summer and you see an orange and white plane coming over the lake, that's going to be a fish from one of our hatcheries. And so we stock a lot of our high alpine lakes via airplane. Uh, and these fish are, much, are smaller, they're only about an inch in size. But so anyway, if, if you ever see an orange and white plane you know, flying over to high alpine lake, it's going to be stock and hatchery fish. So what the plane does is when it comes into the the valley with the high alpine lake, it will slow its airspeed and then it'll lower, um, get close to the water and then drop the fish. And these fish are so small that they're more like feathers falling, not like rocks. And so by slowing the airspeed and getting close to the water, they won't, they don't hit the water very hard, and plus they don't dry out. <laughs> 